what concerns me is that the immutability is such an important part of it, which which leads me to think that you can never have a change that requires a fork because, and in fact, that that's what seemed to happen with the the, the Bitcoin Cash attempt. The hard fork was defeated because if you ever had a hard fork to make one change, then people are going to lobby for other changes too. So it seems to me you have to basically live with it. And if you have to live with it, I wonder if that could grow into a problem or if it could be dealt with in other ways, like like you say. Now we're talking a hundred years down the road, maybe or thirty years down the road, something when when one Satoshi is worth more than a penny, but <laughs> that could come. Yes, very much. And yeah, the the way that the users will act in this new circumstance is incredibly important because like literally the the existence of Bitcoin depends on it. <laughs> and and that's so contradictory to gold, right? In gold, the existence of of base layer gold does not care about human perceivance or the human agreement to rules. But in Bitcoin, it, it does. And I think that's why maybe even calling Bitcoin the, the, the digital gold is, is very scary because that's one so important property of gold right, that Bitcoin obviously does not have. I see. So, so you think the digital gold metaphor is, is misleading and we should avoid it? I, I think it's like all metaphors. It's it tells a very nice story in a in a beautiful picture that is very accurate on many levels, but it is not perfect, and it falls short in in many areas. And um, uh, some of them can be quite c catastrophic if, if misunderstood. Well, you know, one Bitcoin maximalist narrative is that the price can reach a certain amount because people envision that it supplants the role of gold right now. So, if <laughs> If you can't call it a digital gold or an improved an improved uh, digital cur reserve currency that that adopts some of the features that gold could have or used to have, then you can't even make that argument. I mean, you see what I mean? Why why why, why would we say the future value is ten trillion because gold has a ten trillion dollar value now if it's not a digital replacement for gold? You see, you, it seems to be these things are all bound up together. If, if if you say that it's just totally different than gold, so you can't even call it digital gold. Then you have very little basis for saying, well, then its potential value in the future is the value of gold right now. Yeah, that's very true, right? And it's, I mean, it's kind of presumptuous to say uh, that this crazy idea that we have in cyberspace is as, as solid as and as unbreakable and undecayable as gold is. Uh, I, I, I hope we can live up to the claim. As of right now, it certainly seems that we can. But yeah, it's a big claim, and it's it's a little presumptuous. But Bitcoiners are not don't have any shortage of uh, of confidence <laughs> <laughs> and confidence, do they? Yeah, that's very true. The, yeah, this uh, Bitcoin really seems to be a a, a system bordering chaos and uh, complete collapse, <laughs> but it's it's thriving uh, at at that level. Well, what's interesting is to to listen to talks from 2013, 2015, and the narrative, even of the guys that are still around now, is different than what you hear now because we learned something, right? We learned that it, no, it's not a PayPal, it's not a it's not a payment mechanism. Um, so maybe the fact that we've learned something over the years about economics and the economics of of digital money and the way Bitcoin works it should give us a little humility in predicting what's going to happen in five years or 50 years.